Hey, what's up everyone? This is Dom and today we are going to be comparing Apple's iPhone 6 Plus to Samsung's Galaxy Note 4. Yes, I realize there is a limited range of comparisons that can happen between these two devices, but we're going to touch on some of the most important factors, which are design, software features, and cameras. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm not going to make this a battle between iOS and Android as many people have their own preferences which lead them to one platform or another. Either way, these two devices are shaping up to be the most coveted large screen smartphones in 2014 and it makes sense to compare them to help you make an informed decision. First up we have Apple's iPhone 6 Plus and this is the company's first shot at a larger device or a phablet and aside from a record breaking opening weekend, it hasn't been an easy launch for the iPhone 6 Plus. But controversy aside, let's go ahead and find out what makes this thing tick. Starting out with specifications, the iPhone 6 Plus features a 5.5 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, giving it 401 pixels per inch, an Apple A8 chip clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, a quad core Power VR GX6450 GPU, 1 gigabyte of RAM, and a 2915 milliamp hour battery. There's no denying the marginal update in specifications when compared to previous generation iOS devices, but that doesn't mean that there's a huge performance gap between the iPhone 6 Plus and the Galaxy Note 4. As for the Note 4 specifications, we have a 5.7 inch QHD Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 coming in at 515 pixels per inch. We have a quad core 2.7 gigahertz Snapdragon 805 processor, an Adreno 420 GPU, 3 gigabytes of RAM, and a 3220 milliamp hour battery. On paper, it would seem that the Note 4 is miles faster than the iPhone 6 Plus. Every single detail on that spec sheet points to a better device, but as real world usage will show you that's not always the case. Either way, your preference will probably be based on the overall ecosystem and each device's features and functionality. Samsung has taken an entirely different design approach this time around. The Galaxy Note 4's sleek metal frame feels great in the hand, and it's definitely a step up compared to the Galaxy Note 3, but we're still left with some plastic elements such as the back cover which hides the battery, micro SIM card, and micro SD card slot. As far as layout goes, the front of the Note 4 features an earpiece, the appropriate sensors, a 3.7 megapixel front facing camera, capacitive navigation buttons, and a home button with a built in fingerprint scanner. On the left side of the Note 4 you'll find its color matched volume rocker while the right side is home to the power button, and on the top of the device we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, IR blaster, and a small microphone. Coming around to the bottom we have a pair of microphones, micro USB charging port, and the S Pen. And finally on the back side you'll find a 16 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, LED flash, heart rate sensor, and a small speaker. Moving over to Apple's iPhone 6 Plus, on the front side you'll find an earpiece, sensors, a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera, and the circular home button with a built in fingerprint scanner that Apple calls Touch ID. On the right side we have a sleep wake power button and its nano SIM card tray, while the left side features its volume buttons and a mute switch. You won't find anything on the top of the iPhone 6 Plus, but the bottom features a microphone, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, lightning port for charging and a small speaker. Lastly on the back we have an 8 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and dual LED flash which is capable of shooting up to 1080p video at 30 or 60 frames per second and up to 240 frames per second at 720p. Both devices feature NFC but Apple is taking advantage of this with a new mobile payment platform called Apple Pay which may prove to be useful for iPhone 6 and 6 Plus users. This isn't the first mobile payment platform to hit the market but it may be the first one to catch on. Unfortunately, we won't know for sure until about a year or so has passed. Obviously, there's going to be a big difference between the user experience and features on each device. With the iPhone 6 Plus, we're running iOS 8, which is a very simplistic experience overall. Apple keeps iOS fine-tuned and under control for the most part, but that's not always a good thing for everyone. To make it simple, iOS is going to offer the same experience on the iPhone 6 Plus as it does on the iPhone 6 and for the most part, iPhone 5 I'm not going to get in depth with the features that iOS 8 brings to the table, but if you'd like to find out more about them, check out the video I've linked below. With the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, you're getting a very specific set of features that will only apply to the Note line of smartphones. While these features won't be for everyone, Samsung's S Pen will provide an experience like no other smartphone out there, but only if you're going to take advantage of it. I've detailed all of the new S Pen features in my Galaxy Note 4 versus Galaxy Note 3 video, and if you'd like
like to find out more, I'll leave that link down below. Either way, the main advantage to having a Galaxy Note is going to be the S Pen and the large display. Another advantage to the Note series is the ability to multitask and have multiple app windows open at once, or you can stack them on top of one another for a split screen experience. At the end of the day, the S Pen new metal frame design and its 5.7 inch QHD display will be the deciding factors when purchasing a Galaxy Note 4. Do you care about all of these features? Let me know with a comment down below. It's almost expected that you're going to use the Galaxy Note 4 with two hands. This is a very large device and essentially comes with a stylus. If you're looking for a smartphone that can easily be used with one hand, you won't enjoy the Note 4. At the same time, you may experience the same issue with the iPhone 6 Plus. Apple would like you to believe that everything can be done on the 6 Plus with the combination of one hand and its reachability feature, though that's not always true. With a double tap of the home button, iOS will slide the user interface down to the middle of the screen to make the top half of its elements accessible. It's a handy feature in some cases, but usually you're better off just using two hands with the iPhone 6 Plus. Moving along to camera quality, more megapixels does not equal superior picture quality. Both cameras feature optical image stabilization, but Samsung's Galaxy Note 4 has a 16 megapixel sensor, while the iPhone 6 Plus comes in with half the specs at just 8 megapixels. Let's be honest here, both of these cameras take excellent pictures, and it'll be hard for most consumers to tell the difference between each camera in acceptable lighting. The optical image stabilization on both devices helps keep pictures crisp and clean, but you may find that colors slightly vary between the two. As for video, the iPhone 6 Plus shoots 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second, and as I've demonstrated in a cinematic camera test, it's capable of some fantastic quality. With the Galaxy Note 4, you're getting up to UHD quality video, and I'll be sure to link that camera test down below as well. But if you care about resolution, the Galaxy Note 4 is going to be the clear choice when it comes to the camera but both devices capture excellent photos and video overall. As I've mentioned, this isn't really a battle between iOS and Android, it's a battle between what fits your needs best. With the Galaxy Note 4, you're getting a good amount of very specific software features along with S Pen functionality, but not everyone will take advantage of them. However, if you need a high quality device with a large 5.7 inch QHD display, this might be the combination for you. If you're looking for simplicity, the iPhone 6 Plus may be the route to go. Apple has a strong grip on its software and services and like to keep them under a very manageable umbrella. This isn't a bad thing in any way, but if you're familiar with other iOS devices, you won't have any trouble figuring out the iPhone 6 Plus. With Samsung and other Android devices, there's going to be a wide variety of software features that you'll discover over the course of ownership. Both Apple and Samsung have made excellent devices here. The decision is going to come down to which mobile OS you're invested in the most and whether or not you'll take advantage of the features that Samsung brings to the table with the Galaxy Note 4. Hopefully I've provided enough detail to help you make an informed purchase. It's obvious that these two devices are designed for completely different personalities, but which one is right for you? Let me know what you think with a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave it a thumbs up as it does help out the channel a lot. Also, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe for more comparison videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching everyone. This is Dom and have a great day.